RLA55K says, I've heard you refer to yourself and us viewers as makers. What projects would you recommend for a first time maker? And also, uh, second question, second question, what tools should every maker have from the start? Th that, that's a tough one to answer because everybody's different. Everybody is gonna make different things. Um, but I also believe that you are really talking about the realm in which I traffic, which is in the physical making of things, the subtractive manufacturing that I do in much of my work. Um, and in that case, I would say a sharp blade is the very first tool anyone should get comfortable with. Um, and you should learn the key rules of working with a sharp blade, which are keep it as sharp as you practicably can, always point it away from you. And if you are forcing it, you are in trouble. So never force, point it away, keep it sharp. Um, that is absolutely the, the, the first thing anyone should learn about any tool is how to work with a sharp knife because it's going to be one of your main go-tos. Um, as far as a first project, I have one which I love, which gets people used to making and it is actually a very easy project to do. And that's to choose a room in your house, measure it in terms of its dimensions, measure where the door is and where the windows are and the other topographical details of the room and then build it in cardboard. And that sounds, it might sound boring, but it's actually thrilling to build a room in your house and then have it in scale in your house. Uh, I've done it for every room we redecorated. I've done it for, uh, I've done it for offices that my wife was moving into to find out if certain furniture would fit. I've done it here in the cave for describing and talking about how to move things around. Um, it's a wonderful exercise. And there's this moment when you take a picture from outside the door to this room in your house, and then you take the same picture from the same vantage point and the model and the two map perfectly. It is. It's just like you get this whole warm feeling inside. It's like, <laughs> and I, I have built architectural models of both houses that I have owned. Um, and in many cases, I was able to take photos in the models, like through one room, looking into another room, looking into another room that absolutely matched the real thing. It was super, super cool. Um, yeah, building this. It's a really, really simple way to execute an architectural model, and I'll describe to you how I do it. Um, so I take a room, and first I measure the ceiling height, and then I choose a scale. It's usually dollhouse scale, 1 12th, or half that, 1 24th scale. 1 24th scale is also a half of, sorry, it is double the size of O scale trains. Yeah, I think, eight, no, HO is 48th scale, right? Yeah. Um, God, I could be getting that wrong, and I'm sorry if I am, but I usually work in dollhouse or half dollhouse scale, which is 12th or 24th scale. That means one inch equals a foot or one half inch equals a foot. And one half inch equals a foot is a very manageable scale. It means that you know your average house layout, like in my house, which I think is like 60, 75 feet deep, uh, it's, uh, it's about this big. And I, I measure the ceiling height, and then I cut a whole bunch of cardboard to that scale height. So now I've got the walls. Then I take a main piece of cardboard, which is gonna be the bottom, and I map out the room, and I pencil in where the windows are and where the door is. And then I start putting those, I cut the four walls, and before I glue them in, I map out where their door is and where the windows are and where the other details I need to know, and then I glue them together. I cut out the windows before I glue them together, and then I glue them together, and you can do this in less than an hour with a hot glue gun and a single, single edge razor blade. Um, you can also take a much longer period of time to put in your crown molding and the other little details and that inset that makes the door a little funny or the slant of the window, window sill or something like that. <clears throat> It's a great first project specifically because it is an easy execution with a high reward, in my opinion, of getting to see your space made small. And it physicalizes your world, which is <clears throat> all I am doing when I'm making things in here. I'm, I'm creating a new physical experience for myself about how the world for me works. Uh, each prop that I pick up in my life, I'm looking for an experience. And that experience is teaching me about the world. It's also teaching me about myself. It's teaching me about the algorithm that goes on in here, which I'm still gonna spend the rest of my life learning the parameters of. Um, yeah, 
I think that's a terrific first project, and I think that is a terrific place to wrap it up. Um, tested patrons, again, thank you so much for your awesome questions. If you are not a tested patron, but you're tested patron curious, well, go to the description below and click on some of the links. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and as always, stay safe, take good care of each other, and I will see you next time. Adam out. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.